G'day everyone, welcome back to my little home machine shop. Uh, today I'm working on some more vintage engine parts where I've got to uh, remanufacture them from clone copies of the original parts and try and pick up their sizes and the position. Now it's always tricky when machining casts because you don't know where the data points start. So luckily I've got the old ones here which will give me a bit of a reference. Come on over to the mill and I'll show you what I'm working on. I've brought you over to the milling machine here and I've got the two parts here that I um, need to work on today. Now this is the original part and uh, as you can see it's got two holes and a couple of tapped holes. So this bore size here is one inch and this one here is five eighths of an inch. However when I measure this, this is actually 16 millimeters. So five eighths slightly under 16 so I don't know why that would be metric and this one would be imperial. It's, the engine's over 100 year old so it would have been imperial back in the day. Um, I've got a 3.8 UNC hole here that I need to drill and tap. Up here I've got a 5.16th hole that I need to drill and tap. I'll also have to make this little locking screw here. Now there's another little hole here that I need to drill and tap as well and to me that looks like quarter UNC just by looking at it. Now the next thing is this little thing here that says open and shut. Now, I'll be brutally honest, I'm going to do this in the CNC mill and that way then I can do the engraving uh, pretty well. And uh, it looks like a bit of alu aluminium, so I'll, I'll machine that out of aluminium and probably a bit of work holding. I'll probably just use double sided tape when I go to mill that. Right, I, um, how I'm going to hold this today, it's always hard holding these sort of uh, weird parts. I do have this surface here and here that I can grab onto. So if I look at the remanufactured part here, this, this was digitally scanned and then cast in a foundry. And uh, the gentleman that I'm working for, Wayne, uh, he does the scanning himself and then he adds a little bit onto it here and here. So this one here, I'm pretty right, if I machine this down to this face, it should be good to go. And uh, I'll probably have to take some metal off here I'll measure the width of this so I get this exact as well and then I'll just concentrate on one end at a time and then uh, move on to the next end so to speak. Right, -o, let's get into it. I've got the part clamped up in the mill vise here. Um, it's not the best work holding. If this was a CNC part I'd make soft jaws to hold this. I'm not going to make soft jaws for a cast part. Um, I'll give this a crack and hopefully it won't spit it out of the, uh, out of the vise. I'm a bit worried it might sing. It's not too bad. So we'll just have to wait and see and hopefully it doesn't sing like a crack whore down in St Kilda looking for a $2 hit. Now that doesn't sound too bad, so I'm going to keep going here and I'll bring you back when I get close. So off camera I've changed the work holding method here, I've just whacked it straight in the vise and put a couple of uh, little shim washers here just to try and get it level. Um, as I was milling it, I was milling on an angle, so I had to correct that. Um, it's fairly close now, so I'll keep going.
I've uh, taken it out of the vise here and turned it upside down. Um, when I tried to centre this, I might have been a little bit out uh, compared to the old one. So I needed to take the waist off this top side just to see where this datum is going to be. So we're just getting this down now. The thickness here is one inch, so 25.4 millimetres. I'm up to my final pass here on boring this out to one inch and so far so good. I'm quite happy with the way it's turning out. Right, oh, you can see here I've started on the other side and um, I've finished this side, I've bored that out to one inch and tapped that hole. I've got to bring this down here now, as you can see here. So I'm working on this side. So I've got to get this down to around here. So I'll rough it out with this cutter and then I'll drop in with my uh, bigger cutter that does a nice fine clean up pass. You can see here that I've faced this side and it's got a really nice finish. I've got it level, uh, pretty much like the old one is. Um, this is a quarter inch thread that I've got to tap here, so drilling size was 5.1 mil. And uh, I'll start this and then feed it by hand. Okay, that's done and it's to depth and uh, time to flip it over and do the other side.
So I've done the drilling operations here, but I don't have a 16mm drill bit here on, on hand, uh, which is a bit of a bugger really. I was able to make it up to 15 and uh, so this time now I'm going to have to drop back into the boring bar and take, give it a little tickle. Now it's about, um, I don't know why it's measuring 16mm. Um, it may be where, I don't know. I've mic'd it a couple of places in the bore and uh, it's actually 15.98 so that's about 20 micron under 16 mil and it should actually be an imperial size so anyway let's uh let's bore this and see what happens now that was actually too fast i flicked the switch in the wrong direction and uh kept going so I'll have to um, check that now well as you can see I've got some weird and funky work holding going up here I'll flip the part over and to hold it I've got my screw jack under it this block of steel and my little toe clamp there so hopefully I can hold that and machine it safely here today for you guys got to be an inch uh, thickness here the height so I'll give that a, um, a a quick mic up now and see where I'm at this cutter here this is one that Tom gave me from Hilltop Machine Works and uh, I've mentioned that before in some other videos and it leaves a really nice finish on this cast on this SG cast that I'm machining here today all right I've touched off there I've just got my point one and just take that now off camera I've um, taken it all out and detooled everything and I've clocked in this part to find the Y0 and X0 and what I need to do here is to drill and tap a quarter a UNC thread in this position here I need to correct what I just said. I assumed it was quarter, it wasn't. It was 5 sixteenths. So luckily I went and checked it and uh, found a tap. I don't have a lot of Imperial taps. I've um, got a few more now thanks to Kim Bazelic. And uh, anyway, that's 5 sixteenths. And uh, here I am worrying about getting it all tricked and have a look at the angle that's on. Anyway, let's drill that now. This cast drill is really nice by the way, this SG cast. I don't usually uh, put tapping compound on cast, but um, yeah, I just don't want to run the risk today. I'm so close and I want to go in. Right, oh, this little part's finished. Well, that's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, not sure if you found that interesting or not. Um, what were the challenges for me? Well, the challenges for me were the work holding. Now, no doubt when they built these old engines back in the day, they would have had special jigs and fixtures to do everything, drilling, machining, that sort of stuff. You have to in mass production. Sadly, when it comes to one-off jobs like this, I don't have the time to make drill jigs and fixtures and soft jaws for such a, a small part and a one-off, right? If I was making 10 of them, well, that might be something different. So this is where you struggle in a home machine shop. And it's not very economical, and I'll be brutally honest with you today. I've been out here for five and a half hours remanufacturing that part. And have a look at it. Two, uh, what is it, five, five holes, 
and um, you know some some bores and drill and tap. Now keep in mind that making these videos is very time consuming as well. Getting the camera set up, tripping over the tripod constantly, and trying to get that shot. So you could probably add an hour and a half of that. But so there's still a bit of work that went into that. Now what could I you know what could I have done to speed this up? Well, instead of boring the holes, I could have drilled them and reamed them if I had the right size reamer, which I don't. Now good quality reamers will set you back you know a hundred to a couple hundred dollars. Uh, the cheap ones I've been buying off AliExpress, uh, you get what you pay for, yeah? Uh, they're called chucking reamers, but when you so-called chuck them, they don't run that true in the set chuck. But anyway, look, there it is, guys. Now, I'm not going to do this part today, or that part. This part I'll cover on my other channel, the CNC channel. I haven't put a video up there for a while, to be honest with you. So that might be a good little demonstration there. I'll do that in CAD, and then CAM, and then CNC machine it. It shouldn't take that long, should be a quick little video. Obviously, I've got to manually machine this and make another one of these not. But look, I'm really happy with it. I reckon I've got it. I'd have to, I'd have to be well and truly 90%, 95% on spec with the old part. Yep, turn it around the right way. Here we go. There we go. And uh, all I could do to verify it was to clamp it down on my table and take measurements and stuff like that. Rightio, thanks again guys, and uh, hopefully I'll get another video out next Friday for you. I, I don't know how much longer I can keep this pace up with, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I actually work a full-time job, so this takes up a considerable amount of my time sharing these videos with you guys. And I'm not trying to sell you anything, I'm just showing you my journey. Alright, good on you, have a good day, see you next time, bye bye.